Good afternoon, everyone. My job as superintendent of St. Paul Public Schools is to bring an agreement between our bargaining units and the school district to our Board of Education for their approval. It's an important task and one that we don't take lightly at all. We have been negotiating since this past fall, exchanging ideas, identifying priorities, working together, and most importantly, saying how much we prioritize our future in working with St. Paul Public Schools children, our staff, and the entire community. We are optimistic in the next three days that our groups can come together and avoid a teacher strike, a strike of our educational assistants and our school community service professionals. It is imperative as a community now more than ever that we understand what's at stake. We certainly do as a district. As a St. Paul parent, I certainly understand. And I want our community to know that it is my expectation on behalf of our Board of Education that we have an agreement in place and we're able to continue school per our normal schedule next week. We have put aside time today, tomorrow, through the weekend to sit down, identify priorities, work together, work with the professionals that are there, both from our administration and the teachers who are giving their time to put their best ideas forward to make sure that this agreement is in place. With that, we'll take any questions. Josh, we have about four days at this time where a strike would not require us to extend the school year either into the summer or look at recovering days through planned uh, vacations at this time. You know how much money you save each day of a strike? Oh, man. What's the district's projected deficit for next year, next fiscal year? We are in the process right now, per our normal budgeting process, uh, to determine our projected budget. Um, so we, we know that there will be a deficit, but that exact amount has not been, uh, we have not gotten to that exact amount yet. Antonio, can you give us a kind of ballpark and how it compares to the past three years? At this point, again, based on our enrollment projections and the work that our, our team is doing to arrive at the very best numbers, uh, we know that coming up with that number is an important step in our budgeting. And, uh, you know, because of the time we're spending in negotiations, uh, we've had to, uh, to take some time away from that important task. Dr. Graff, Miles of Channel 5. You have had in the last now month a couple of um, events that have likely caused parents in this district and others to a lot of stress and anxiety with the weather situation last month and now this. What do you say to parents who have concerns about what's going on here? You know, Jessica, I think I can tell them what's real. And when I'm out each and every day in our buildings, in our classrooms, in the community, there's a lot of excitement and great work going on in our district. And to have, you know, our work being be judged by two events, uh, by single people, um, myself and, and many others who uh, many may look to as being responsible for some of this. I say to you, we're a community. And w a community comes together in times that are good, times that are hard, and in times that are bad. And they work together in good faith to make sure that we're prioritizing our children. And we're moving forward. Um, that's what our work, that's what my commitment to this community and to the school district is. And, and that's what's happening every day. Y you know, you would think that after some of these events that work just stops and slows down. And yes, there, there is definitely stress and, and people are wondering and worrying. But when you step into a classroom and see what's happening, you forget about all that because you see incredible work being done. Um, that's what makes this challenging. You know, we are uh, being depicted as being in a room and fighting about our kids. And that just isn't the case. We're fighting over the terms and conditions of a contract to allow us to do the words. Now I use fighting or discussing. Uh, we're discussing those terms and, and we're vetting ideas and we're asking teachers to be innovative and creative and they're demanding the same of us. And we're doing this in a time of very limited finances. We're doing this in a time where our schools have been underfunded for a long time. We have some factors that we control as well uh, in terms of our enrollment and other factors that are important uh, pinpoints in, in that ultimate funding. But we are a community. We have to work together. about how complicated this has been on your eighth day of mediation. You've been 
working on these negotiations since September, what would you like to share with our viewers about how complicated or difficult this has been? Well, I, I will allow Mr. Cathy to speak to this as well, but back in September, we created a set of guiding principles um, to help us understand that through these times uh, that sometimes may be difficult, we have to rely on some core beliefs and expectations that we have of ourselves and that we have of others that come together to the table. And uh, based on that, the relational piece of negotiations is really important because there are going to be some yeses and some noes in those negotiations, yet we have to move on and work together. Uh, so it's been really important for us to establish that. Of course, we have many pinpoints and factors in our negotiations uh, that guide those discussions. And it is complicated. Um, it is very complicated, and we're relying on um, emotion. We're relying on uh, people who want to do great work, and we're relying on children each and every day having a great experience in our classrooms. Thank you, Dr. Gotham. And I'll add to that because I think complicated was the right word. And I would say the complication stems from the fact that we don't have a great deal of philosophical difference um, in the room from what um, both sides uh, uh, believe here in the process. I think where we differ are, you know, the methodologies, the processes, and as you've heard referenced, um, how do we find the financial resources to reach agreement on some of the things that are still on the table? Um, so that adds to the complication. Um, it's always complicated when you have a difference of opinion with people that you work closely with. And I think that's what we have to remember here. You know, this is um, a group of colleagues who are trying to figure out ways forward. And the complication is exacerbated by the fact that it's all for our kids. You know, um, at the end of the day, we're trying to do what's right for the, the, the kids of our district. So um, no one wants to say, uh, a financial reason is the reason that you want to turn away from a position. Um, but as uh, administrators and leaders of the district, we have to balance that desire to provide every resource with the need to ensure there is a district long term uh, for kids in St. Paul who's going to need it. Yeah, so I mean, that estimate in what their total cost of their proposals would um, amount to today has not changed. What we're talking about now is as we go through this negotiation process, of course, we're trying to figure out what in each proposal is a want versus a need. Now, that could change the total dollar amount, but at this point, we're still talking about a total package estimated at around $160 million versus our available, available funding of just over $2 million. Yes, our $2 million uh, allocation is the amount we have available for each year of the contract. Their 160 is the total costing that we see in the comprehensive package. Um, Heidi with Para Weapons, can you talk a little bit about yeah, what you guys would do if the school would close? Would it be all the schools that would close? Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. We have been working together um, collaboratively of a team, both internal and external, with our external partners. And we believe we have put together a very strong um, program for our families. So if the strike were to occur, the two days following that announcement, St. Paul Public Schools will be closed. All grades, all schools. After that, we have put together a program for our elementary age students that offers throughout the city, throughout 24 sites throughout the city, we will be serving breakfast, lunch, and supper, and providing support for those families between 8.30 and 4 o'clock. For our secondary students, 6th through 12th grade, we are providing standard-based activities that they will be able to access online through the use of their iPads. All of our secondary students have iPads that they take home on a nightly basis. When the union talks about safe sites, is that, the, is that them working with you on that, what you're discussing right now, or are those two separate things? St. Paul Public Schools at this particular time is working primarily with some of our external partners, including the city, as well as the, the Big Brothers, Big Sisters, the, the Ys, um, and some of our other community-based agencies, our park and rec sites, and I can't speak on behalf of the St. Paul Federation of Teachers what sites they're doing and what program they're doing. So these 24 locations would be 
rec centers? The, the, the sites that I'm speaking of are actually St. Paul Public School buildings. Um, we are actually sending out information to families today and every day thereafter to continuously keep them updated with the sites particular, how they register for the sites, how they will access transportation to those particular sites. Will you guys offer transportation? Yes, we will. Do other staff come to work if the teachers strike? Yes, under our, um, we've got a phased in approach. So in the first two days that Chief Turner just referenced, Sylvie, yes, we'll be asking all non-striking staff to come to work. Uh, that's important for us in our assessment so that we can get a good understanding of how many resources we'll have available to us and then assign them properly across the sites that we've designated. Then we'd have to look into um, how long it goes. So our process looks at continuing um, the St. Paul Public Schools community activities for a couple of days. But of course, a prolonged strike um, would mean that we'd have to look at different measures. So um, don't know what that date is at this point. We're still working through that. But for the, at least the first few days, we're looking to provide an option for our families. Uh, no, Josh, we have not gotten to salary yet. Um, most of our time over the last few days have centered around um, discussions on class size. Um, we've had some discussions on how we assign and utilize resources within our special education and English language learner programs. And we've talked um, at some degree about restorative practices. The conversation that we've had to date about wages has been pretty high level, and that was, um, uh, for the most part, us communicating the 1% figure that we've been um, given clearance with with our board. In your, uh, in your mediation update last night, you mentioned uh, some movement towards uh, caps for class sizes. Yes. So I want, first off, I want to clarify that you're talking about caps as opposed to the ranges. The district or the union wanted caps. And if so, would it push you past the 2.07 million? Very good questions, Tony. Um, we are talking at this point about caps and ranges. Um, so we have uh, maintained some of the class size range language there, but what we're adding is that within those ranges, no one teacher will have classes that exceed the designated cap amounts. Um, quite honestly, we're, we're excited about where the class size conversation is going right now. Um, the, our early numbers haven't given us a total number, but we do see some potential for dollar savings in the new model that's being proposed, and that's why um, we're looking to see where we can get that across the finish line as soon as possible. Jackie, did you mention with these 24 sites, if you do need to use this, if it comes to that, who would be manning those buildings? Yes, thank you. So um, the programming will be, and I should say that of the 24 sites, there's a combination of what's happening at those sites. Some of those sites will be sites for the, the meals. Some of the sites will be sites for the meals as well as programming. And some of the sites will be offering our traditional Discovery Club program. So it's a combination of 24 sites will have some type of support for families in those particular buildings. But under, they will be managed under our office, our community ed education will be managing those office. And keep in mind all of our principals as well as our assistant principals and all the other staff that are not in the striking um, bargaining groups will also be accessible. So you know, varsity sports still no it's not necessarily that all the coaches are um, teachers some of our coaches are community members and in other represent other bargaining groups so the coaches um, that are able to work and choose to work are the coaches that we will be using so athletics will still go on varsity athletics will continue Well, if there are no other questions, we'll wrap it up. If oh. anybody else has anything, please. One more. Yeah, um, in the, uh, you said students will be welcomed at community centers where and, and how many of those are in the past? Like, right, parks and rec. 
So we are working with the city. The city um, is, has reached out to be a partner. So their recreation centers will run their normal hours. They are looking to whether or not they can offer some extension hours, extended hours, um, but they know they are well aware of the strike. Keep in mind that our, our children and our youth go to our park and recreation centers every day. Um, and so they're used to that plan and they are used to supporting and welcoming our students regardless of a strike or not. So they are um, working with us to see if they can extend some of their hours. But right now it's their traditional hours in the park and recreation centers throughout the city that are currently, where the, um, they're currently located. Jackie, can you just elaborate on the transportation? I mean, will that be student buses that you're gonna run if you need to do that? What we are looking at doing is running a shuttle model from any of our St. Paul Public School sites to the closest um, program site that we are actually calling St. Paul Public School, St. Paul Public School Kids Spaces, Kids Spaces. So um, every single household and every single house resident in the city of St. Paul is within a mile of a St. Paul Public School. So we believe for families that need to access transportation, if they can get their child to a St. Paul Public School, we will be running um, shuttles, if you will, to get them to the, to the sp spots for children where there'll be programming activities and food. I know it was mentioned earlier that there's some optimism around getting this done within the next three days. Was there any indication in the eighth day of mediation today that there's reason to be optimistic and, and what was that indication? You know, I'll, I'll address that uh, first and then let uh, Director Kathy discuss it as well. You know, through this time, I've been engaged with our stakeholders, many stakeholders. Our lawmakers, the governor's office, certainly Mayor Carter and the city and I have been in close contact. And our Board of Education. And the one thing that I can say is that uh, the seven Board of Education members are collaborating incredibly well together. Um, we have a strong message for our negotiations team and a strong and committed willingness to our bargaining partners to come to agreement. And understanding that that might not be met easily, but it's our expectation that an agreement is met and we are able to have school on Tuesday morning and avoid a strike. And I think our optimism isn't overstated simply um, from the fact that it stems from what we're seeing happen in the room over the last couple of days. Um, there's been movement and more tentative agreements reached. Even conversations about the remaining issues um, have taken on a different tone and tenor. I would say over the last couple of days. Um, so whenever you can stop looking at it from a pure conflict perspective and, and start to work towards your end goal, um, I think you start to see um, obstacles fall to the side. And um, I'll say I think that's where we are at this point. All right, thanks everyone for coming out.